art helps you develop that portion of your brain the creative portion which and even which introduces you to creative thinking and analyzing and all that is related it's just not one or the other mm. and um, the fact that i think um, the state is again trying to introduce back art into the yeah, education system right. I'm all for that. I think it was it's really important and it was unfortunate that, that was taken right. out of yeah. the education system. Right. So that's crucial, I yeah. think. Coming to you straight from Fremont, California, this is the Fremont Podcast, dedicated to telling the stories of the past and present of the people and places of the city of Fremont, one conversation at a time. Hello, Fremont. This is Kevin. You are listening to episode 66 of the Fremont Podcast. Now, here's your host, Ricky B. Well, I'm excited to be joined by Durba, and uh, she and I first met when I interviewed uh, uh, the committee that was part of the Better Block um, in, over in Mission San Jose. And so uh, Durba was among, I think there was four or five different people sitting around that table when we, when we did that episode. Um, but, um, but I wanted to have Durba on because she is an artist, and she has lived in the Fremont community for... Um, a while. How long have you lived here? Um, I've been here since I think 98. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, she's an artist and she uh, had her art on display at Better Block. And that was really cool to see that. And there was a lot of uh, people who were interested in, in what you had on display there. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. is pretty exciting. Yeah. 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 So that, that was a lot of fun. But I wanted to talk <laughs> with you and hear more about your story. Um, hear about your art, what inspires you. Great. Um, you were born in, you weren't born in the U.S. I was born in India. India, okay. In, in Calcutta. Uh, okay. I moved here after I got married, um, 1998. Okay. I've uh, been here since then, just went back for three years uh, because okay. of my hu husband's job and then back Okay. Back here in Fremont. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you study art in India or was art something a part of your life early on? Well, I, so like in India, you grow up, you know, either learning how to sing or dance, uh, you know, uh, the Indian cultural, the classical dancings or art. And I grew up uh, taking lessons in art from a local artist over there. Okay. And classical dancing. But um, I think after high school, I stopped. I mean, you know, like just went to academics and the other things that, you know, uh, the teenagers do, right? Yeah. Um, and then it took, it, it took a backseat for a long, long time. I think it was when I went back to India, uh, 2006 to 2009, 2000, end of 2008. Okay. My husband's like, you know, you keep talking about how you miss art. Why don't you do something about it? <laughs> you know? And he went on and on. And I was so, like, it was so maddening to constantly hear him telling me that just to shut him up. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take up art. <laughs> That's funny. That's and awesome. I never learned oil painting before. So I thought, you know, I um, let me start oil painting. And I, there was this artist who used to come to these apartment buildings to teach kids. And I'm like, I just went up to him and I'm like, I asked him, like, do you teach oil painting? He's like, sure. And that's how I started. I wow. took a few lessons from him, moved back in 2009 and... Wow. Uh, that's amazing. And started off, yeah. So I'm curious then, what when, you know, when young people or kids take uh, art lessons when they're younger, before you graduated from high school, is there a certain right. medium that is pretty common or is there something that you specifically focused on when you were younger? So, you know, I think it depends on um, the uh, the person you're learning from. Um, the artist I learned from, he uh, specialized in watercolors and that's all he taught me. And at times I got bored looking, like then looking back, I think, you know, he taught valuable lessons, but, you know, he would say paint the sky. And I look at the sky, I'm like, I can't just paint the sky. It's just blue. <laughs> but now I realize, okay, you have to observe yeah. nature at huh. different times and then paint, right? Mm. So um, that's, so all I learned was watercolors. And then after a while, I had a cousin who's an artist too. And I wanted to learn like oil pastels and charcoal pencil sketching. Mm. And um, I asked him to teach me. So he taught me for a few months, okay. like, you know, oil okay. pastels and charcoal. But that was the extent of my 
uh, wow. learning. So I'm basically a self-taught artist. Okay. Artist. okay. Yeah. What did What did you pursue? What did you uh, pursue after high school, or what was it that you so, that you yeah. loved, or, or what did you do? Yeah. So I majored in uh, English literature. Okay. I did my master's in English literature from Calcutta University. Oh wow, that's cool. Um, I've forgotten everything. <laughs> 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 So That's when my awesome. kids come to me saying, hey, you did like Shakespeare, you did thing. I'm like, yeah, don't ask me now. I don't remember. <laughs> That's uh, funny. And then I worked, I worked in banking for a while. Okay. And even after I moved here, I worked in banking for a while. Was banking something that you did because you enjoyed that? Or was it just something that was an option for you to do at it the time? It was just an option just for an me option. to do. Just an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you glad that your husband asked you or nudged you or annoyed oh, yes. you to oh, yes. become an artist? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it like kudos to him if it wasn't for his uh pushing and mm -hmm. you know goading i wouldn't have um, gotten back to art yeah yeah wow that's cool so how long have you been practicing the art that you do now like so you you got you said you kind of got back into it when you went back to india 2006 2009 right you came back to the united states after that so t since 2011 I would say, like okay. 2010, 2011. So okay. it's been like, what, 10, 12 years? Okay. 12, 13 years. And would you say the majority of what you do now is oil, uh, oil So paint? I started with oil and then I moved to acrylic painting. So I still like kind of move between oil and acrylic, but I do acrylics more. Okay. The reason being is oil takes a long time to dry. Okay. And yeah. if it's raining and pouring like now, it's I mean, not it's to. not going to dry. Mm. And I'm basically impatient. I can't <laughs> wait. Well, if, if you, know? it, you had to learn the lesson to paint the sky and you had to wait <laughs> to see what the sky looked like, I can understand that. <laughs> yeah, so I, majority of my work right now is in acrylics. So uh -huh. I do miss oil, so I you know, yeah. go back and forth at times. Yeah. Was there a moment in that, that period of time when you kind of got back into doing art that you just realized this is what I love to do, or I just want to keep doing this? Or was there like a turning point to where it was like, um, you know, I'm going to just go after this? So um, there, I, would, I wouldn't say there was like a particular point, but it was a gradual kind of moving. So I started um, painting and then I realized how much I actually really loved it. And my art has actually come a long way. So it was a lot of, um, initially it was a lot of like a couple of portraits, landscapes, and I was kind of still experimenting with different things. Um, and then I started doing abstract work. And that's when I hit, hit me that I love abstract wow. work. What do you love about it? What is what is yeah? What, what do you enjoy about abstract? You know, work? I loved playing. Like, see, being in India, growing up in India, you are bombarded with colors. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we have festivals of colors. Yeah. Our, our religious festivals, our weddings—they're all explosions of color. Mm. Um, and so I know I was attracted to color and color played a, and still plays a really important part in my work. When you see my work, the one thing you will say, wow, it's really colorful. It's very, yeah. so abstracts kind of let me, um, delve into that, like, like color and texture in, and I didn't want like to say, say you're painting a realistic tree. You can paint it like the way it looks like, right? In abstract, you can just let your imagination go. Hmm and mm. depict it the way you want to. Yeah. And so it was like nature and, you know, whatever caught my fancy, mm. but I like to kind of um, depict it in an abstract yeah. way. And I learned a lot from like visiting museums and going to looking at YouTube shows and everything and a couple of artists which like I really follow, um, like was Jackson Pollock. He, I mean, I love his work. Um, then there was a um, lot of um, Klantinsky and there were a couple of other uh, like artists who do a lot of abstract work, mm -hmm. who does a lot of geometric work. So my work has moved now from abstract expressionism, which I still do, to geometric work. Oh, interesting. And now I'm trying to combine both like you know and That's then cool. a little bit of the Picasso because I used to do portraits before. So I'm like, okay, how can I combine portraits in an abstract yeah. way? Yeah. to geometric stuff. So I started combining all those That's three. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. But I just interviewed a lady who uh, lives here in Fremont. She's from Russia. Okay. She got higher level degrees in mathematics, mm. and she teaches uh, here at, in Fremont at the Russian School of Mathematics. 
I asked her why she loved math. In some sense, she said that because of the artistry of the math. And um, she talked about geometry specifically right. as being something that really inspires her to understand the world around mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we live in. And we had a great conversation about that. Right. I find it fascinating that um, you uh, are kind of expressing it from the opposite side, that you as an artist right. yeah. are leaning into geometry, geometry as being yes. something that's inspiring for you to understand the world that, that you are engaged with. See, if you look at nature and everything around you, it's all in shapes, right? And you can use that in art in different ways and never get bored. Mm, yeah, And that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. And, and the fact that my family and everybody in my family is a nerd and a geek in mathematics and science, <laughs> I'm like, okay, how do I... And, you know, I, I'm not that extent, but I am too. But in a way, I feel like, hey, okay, combining geometry yeah, with... Yeah. Art. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. So what? So what does? So what does a um, a pro project process look like to you? So, I mean, do you kind of have things that you you know list of things that you want to work on, or do you have in your mind like I don't know, or, or is it just does it come to you by inspiration? Are you just sitting around in your backyard or taking a walk and you notice something and it inspires you to paint and you go paint or what does that what does that look like for you so um it's different for example and i'll give you a couple of small examples yeah. um i used to volunteer a lot at the element elementary school that my kids used to go to mission san jose elementary mm -hmm. and there was this program called fame um, okay. fine arts mini experience where uh, parent volunteers would teach kids um, come in and give lessons on like a composer and an artist and end with a art uh, project or okay. art you know like art um, uh, activity and um, there was one where we had to do Jackson Pollock okay and I since I didn't come from an art background I didn't know a lot of art history mm. initially but this fame program introduced me to a lot of wow. these artists and different kinds of arts and I, I got really fascinated yeah. by everything yeah and I I conducted this la lesson on Jackson Pollock and I came back and I did two paintings <laughs> on that style so you know so it depends you know different yeah. things and then for example during COVID time sitting at home like I was so bored mm. I mean, art really saved me. And I was like, okay, life is just going on. Days are just going on. I need some structure. Hmm. And that's when I moved to geometric abstractions. Oh. Because, okay, shapes. Interesting. You know? So it's still like abstract, but it kind of had, yeah. you know, like a uh, constraint yeah. in a way. Yeah. We'll be right back. You can hear the rest of this conversation in just a moment. Hello Fremont, this is Andrew. I'm checking in on Ricky after his class at Own It Fitness. Back on episode 56, he interviewed the owner, Miguel, and after that, he started going to class. Let's see how he is. Hey Ricky. What's up, man? How you doing? Good, how was class? Oh man, it was it was great, my butt got kicked. Yeah? Big time, yeah. What'd you do? I did a bunch of, um, uh, we did a, a assault bike, we did ropes, uh, we did, um, Squat jumps, uh, just a bunch of stuff to get our heart rate up and to work all the bo uh, muscles in our body. So, yeah, kick my butt. <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, man, I feel exhausted because it's a cardio day. I was at the end of our workout. I was just on the ground panting a bit, so I'm, I'm, I'm worn out, but I feel good. I feel really good. Was it worth it? It was totally worth it. It's been totally worth it. I, after the first week, I felt like I wasn't going to be able to do it, but now... Uh, I look forward to it, and I think it's, I'm feeling it in my body. My body feels so much better. Uh, I feel more energy in my body, and I'm just really glad to be doing it right now. And where are we? Yeah, we're on the corner of Blakeau and Maori. Uh, it's kind of hidden away, but if you Google it, you can find it pretty easily. If you just park in the parking lot behind the building, and you can find it right, uh, right inside the, uh, the little square here. If people want to go here, what should they do? Yeah, uh, Own It Fitness. Um, you can go to their Instagram. They post stuff there. You can also go to, um, uh, I believe, <laughs> I believe it's ownmyfitness.com. But you can look for Own It Fitness on Google, or you can go to their Instagram, and uh, you can connect with them there. They've got all kinds of personal training options. They've got class options. 
They got a lot of different things going on and they just expanded their space. So they practically doubled their workout space, um, which is fantastic. It gives a lot of room for everyone to be doing their own, their own workout. Buying a home is a big decision. When I'm trying to make a big decision in my life, I turn to family. Family generally has my well-being in mind. They want the best for me. Whenever I visit Jennifer at Petroselli Homes in Niles, she treats me like family. If you're in the process of buying or selling a home, turn to family. Turn to Petroselli Homes. Dale Hardware is now ready to open their own pet center. Now you can get all of your pet supplies. You can get everything you need for your furry friends right at Dale Hardware. On top of that, Dale Hardware is the only hardware store in the country that has a destination center for Milwaukee tools. There are more Milwaukee tools under that roof than any other retail establishment in the country. Even with these big changes, the heart of Dale Hardware has not changed. So come on down to Dale Hardware and let a specialist help you find exactly what you're looking for with the type of care and attention that hasn't changed for over 65 years. And now, back to our conversation. That's really cool because that's exactly the way it felt too. It felt like one day just kind of melded into the next day. Right. And right. it was like, what day of the week is it? I don't know because everything that has been concrete or that has created like structure for my life has kind of been mush you know exactly and so kind of entering into something like that that where you're like no i'm going to intentionally create some um some parameters some mm -hmm. some structure for you know what you're doing kind of kind of opens that back up in your mind right. a little bit yeah. that's really cool yeah that's really yeah. cool well um do you have any <clears throat> projects you're working on right now so um, I have like I have a couple of actually exhibitions coming up. Okay. One is an olive hide, um, which start uh, starts from in person, which starts from April um, sixth to May twenty seventh. Ever since I met you after Better Block, I was excited, you know, to know have met you and wanted to have you on the podcast. Um, but specifically, we have you on the podcast because the month of April. Tell me a little bit about, about about the month of April in the city of Fremont right now. Right. So I think th like uh, it started with the state of California uh, recognizing April as the arts and cultural month, and Fremont. I think they adopted the proclamation last year. Okay. Uh, about a uh, celebrating April as arts and cultural activity month. But they didn't have enough time to do it last year, so they're trying in a big way this year to promote mm -hmm. art. Yeah, and I just art I literally just saw on the way here. I saw an Instagram post from the city of Fremont that's that's uh, they just created a website called FremontCreates.com. dot com, right? And yeah. uh, so they're really pushing for it now. Yeah, yeah, and um, so there are a lot of different activities happening this uh, in April in Fremont. And not just in arts, but like in music and dance mm. and painting and different types of yeah. genres of art. Um, so um, different galleries in Fremont are having exhibitions. Um, I have uh, artworks each in Olive Hyde, which is happening there. Uh, and that's with, in uh, uh, Mission uh, San Jose, right? This, uh, that's on Washington Boulevard, yeah. Olive Hyde Artist Guild. Yeah. Um, their show is from April 6th to May 27th. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, Fremont Art Association Gallery on Niles, that's um, happening from April 2nd to uh, April 20, April 30th. Okay, okay. So... Um, and you have art in there I as have, well? Uh, I have a painting each and each that's of them, great. which is great. Like, yeah. And there's, uh, you know, the better block that you were referring yeah. to. Um, so they have uh, another street art fair coming up okay. in April, okay. April 29th. Down in Mission San Jose? Same Ellsworth Ave Avenue, wow. Washington uh, Boulevard cool. in Ellsworth. Um, was, was this inspired because of Better Block? So, yes. So the Better Block, once they completed their project, they handed over all their materials and everything to the Mission San Jose Chamber of Commerce. And... Um, the Chamber of Commerce kind of made a commitment that they would at, they would try to do at least one per year, if not more. That's great. And they did a small, like a holiday fair, like, you know, in conjunction with the tree lighting. I remember that, at yeah. Mission yeah. San Jose yeah. last year. So this month, so this year they're doing uh, in April for the April's uh, Art and Cultural Month. And they're planning on doing one in September to okay. line up with the Better Block 
but that's still in the works. Okay. So they are okay. focusing awesome. on this. So the the one in uh, so this uh, better block uh, inspired uh, is it specifically art then, or is it just uh, something that you'll be present at? The, it is the arts. It's called Art Mosaic. Art um, Mosaic, okay. And, you know, I think they are still looking for artist vendors. And uh, if if people yeah. are interested, okay. um, they can just go to the Mission San Jose Chamber of Commerce website okay. to cool. figure out the details. Wow. So so you have a lot of things coming up then that you I potentially... Have a, be, yeah. 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 So... Um, y- you don't have, or you do have, your own gallery. No, Where no. is your gallery? Yeah. <laughs> so I have my own um, home studio. Home studio, okay. And that's um, on uh, cl- very close to Washington Boulevard, yeah, okay. Washington and Pasio yeah. Patre. Um, I I paint over there. Um, I do um, uh, gallery vis- uh, studio visits by appointment. Okay. I teach art from my home studio, oh. so I teach kids well, art. Yeah, and tell me about that. What is it? What? How does that? Uh, so I've been teaching. So it started when a friend of mine approached me to teach her daughter. This was in 2012, and my first three students were her daughter and my two girls. Oh, okay. And um, now, like you know, I've been teaching for a while now, and um, kids love it. I yeah. have a lot of um, mother and daughter duos also coming. Um, and awesome. uh, if people are interested, they can go to my website, okay. um, durbasen.com, d- uh, okay. D-U-R-B-A-S-E-N. Okay. We'll put that on the uh, show notes as well for people sure. to click on the yeah. link there. And too. Um, it's fun. I mean, I know the kids love it. And a lot of, lot of my students um, and new enrollment is through word of mouth. Okay. okay. And that, I feel, is the greatest, um, you know, pat on the back, I it would is. say. Because yeah. if people are not happy, they would not recommend me. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. so how many students do you have right now? Around about 80, uh, 20, 18 okay. to 20. Oh, yeah. wow. That's so, awesome. So what kind of, uh, do, you, do you teach them specifically like pastel or acrylic or what do you, what do you teach? Um, I teach all kinds because I have uh, kids coming from, say, five-year-old to okay. adults. Yeah. Um, so initially it's through like crayons and color pencils and they move on to watercolors, okay. oil pastels, yeah. um, charcoal, acrylic, so oil painting so okay. like i have um, a senior right now in school two of them one doing acrylic one doing oil mm. so but like when they are young i just teach them introduce them to different mediums yeah and then they say oh this is what i want to do this is the medium wow. i want to kind of pursue yeah. so are your yeah. are, are your children still doing uh, art themselves no oh. my <laughs> older ones working my younger ones off to college in the fall okay Okay. But they are, they've learned, they're artistic enough. They you know, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, they appreciate yeah. it. Well, th- they might come back to it too, like you did after you. Yeah, after but they're in the other arts, different kind of, they're in music and okay. everything, so yeah. which is good enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what, what, what would you say would be the value for somebody, um, for a child or for somebody interested in being in, in the arts? Like, what what do you think is the, the greatest takeaway that somebody has if they, you know, were to take... Um, classes on painting or doing art? So um, I really feel that art is very important for every single person to pursue, like a child to pursue. For creative development, even if you are an engineer and you want to kind of, you know, um, say make a product or develop a product, it's about creativity, you know. Mm. Art helps you develop that portion of your brain, the creative portion which and even which introduces you to creative thinking and analyzing and all that is related it's just not one or the other Hmm. and um the fact that i think um the state is again trying to introduce back art into the education system i'm all for that i think it was it's really important and it was unfortunate that that was taken out of the education system so that's crucial i feel yeah i think that's a great point i mean there's so many things uh, I think that it's. I think it's great if people can learn to, uh, you know, study, um, you know, science and and math and stuff like that to really, you know, make them give them opportunities to do things in a particular career, mm-hmm. you know, career path that would be, you know, allow them to be successful with things. That, but I, I do think that there's something about art and uh, doing things with your hands and engaging in in something that's physical. That really reminds us so much of you know of what 
life is about, you know, yeah. the, what life is like around right, us. Right, And it helps you to relax also. The stress is so much nowadays, even with, like with kids, the high schoolers and everybody. And just not art, it could be music. Anything that helps you to relax mm. and, you know, kind of balances you, I think that is very important. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I was just talking to somebody else about a particular situation that I'm, I'm involved with. And I was just telling them that I think that one of the problems, I lo- there's so many things that we benefit from with technology, right? I'm not bashing technology, but mm-hmm. I think that there is, um, I think sometimes technology creates an expectation or a demand on us that we honestly just are not able to handle, you know, right. yeah. like whether it's uh, just the, um, you know, the, the the feeling of needing to be in so many different conversations at one time because right. we're on social media or because of, you know, whatever, the text messaging or whatever, or the things that we feel like we're missing out on because we're being exposed to something that's happening at the same time we're committed to, you know, something else. And I do think that there's something about physical limitations that's important for us to realize that physical limitations aren't necessarily a bad thing you know sometimes the physical limitations are exactly what we need and we need to slow down and do something like wait for oil to dry (laughs) or see (laughs) what kind of things inspire us in the sky and that sort of thing you know and i think that that's important for us uh as individuals and i think that's also good for our community as well because sometimes i feel like we think that we're connected with our community around us because we're connected with people on social media and sometimes we just need to sit in a coffee shop and wait to see who who we meet, who comes exactly, in the door, exactly, you know, who yeah. sits next to us. Right. Especially like, you know, that street fair last year, especially after COVID, I have never seen so many people on foot in a place in a long, long mm. time in Fremont. And yeah. it was good to see like, you know, me, uh, like, you know, people we knew, people we know and, you know, yeah. just like, hey, hi, how are you doing? You know, it just the whole feel of community. That was great. That's and great. I'm looking forward to that again. I love that. I love that. Well, Durba, uh, you've inspired me. I'm excited. I actually, so uh, I've done art, some art in mm-hmm. my life. Mm-hmm. I remember I've, I've probably drawn a couple hundred horses when I was a kid, you know, (laughs) I love drawing animals and, and, uh, and then, uh, when I used to travel doing theater, which I talked about in episode 50, when I was interviewed about, you know, my life, I actually traveled doing theater, but I started that whole journey by being, uh, doing things on the, um, the technical side of the theater. So I would, you know, do the stage lighting. I would do, um, the props and then the sets. And so I've painted a lot of large sets right. for for uh, theater shows and stuff like that. And I enjoyed it. I worked with a professional theater um, artist from Broadway. He did shows all around the world. And I learned from him about painting and mm-hmm. how to paint for, mm-hmm. the, for the stage, you know. And I really enjoyed that. And there's times where I've gone to the store and I've picked up a canvas and a brush and some paint and said, I miss this. I'm going to do it again sometime or I'm going to do it again. So You know what? F- uh, to you and to the others like you, um, I do a lot of uh, paint alongs like, you know, paint and sip and paint and afternoon tea. I have, wa- I have one coming up. Okay. April 16th. Okay. Mission Coffee Roasting Company okay. on Washington Boulevard. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's paint and afternoon tea, and the price includes tea and um, savories and sandwiches and everything. And um, that sounds awesome. Come, like yeah. uh, Eventbrite on Facebook. Okay. Um, okay. It's called Paint and Afternoon Tea. Okay. It's there on my Instagram page in my bio. Sign up. Come. That get sounds your awesome. Friends. Yeah. I, I, you know, I will look into that. I'm not sure what I'm doing on the 16th, but I'll check my calendar, and that sure. sounds like a lot of fun. So, Durba, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Thank you for the conversation and the inspiration. And I'm looking forward to seeing your artwork out there at the different places around the city. It'd be really cool. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This episode was hosted and produced by Ricky B. I'm Gary Williams. Andrew Cavett is the editor. Music is provided through Soundstripe.com. You can find links to our social media and other content at thefremontpodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe wherever it is that you listen so you don't miss an episode. And if you're so inclined, leave a kind review so that others can find the podcast. 
Join us next week on the Fremont Podcast. The best volleyball sand pit concert I have ever been to. This is a Muggins Media Podcast.